Lord, thank you for this moment that we have to share your word. I pray that it will be not my thoughts or experience, but your word. Amen. Today we are again looking at the theme, Peter's word, my prayer. And this is part two of what we started last week. When we looked at Peter's words, we read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. And we saw that his words were to the wives. He's asking them to be submissive. He's asking the wives also to concentrate on inner beauty more than they concentrate on the outer beauty. So today we are looking at one verse and he's speaking his words to the men. And so as I asked last time, am I really experienced to share this? I believe not, but I'm not sharing my experience, but I'm sharing God's word. When we look at this passage, chapter 3 of 1 Peter, verse 1 to 7, we see that six verses are looking at women, are looking at wives, and one verse is only to the men, to the husbands. And you could be wondering why. There's this preacher called H.B. Charles Jr. who says something about this. He says, the first thing that jumps out is that Peter says six times more to wives than husbands. It is a matter of inspiration, not inequality. He says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, Paul devotes three verses to wives and nine verses to husbands. So regardless of the gravity of a text, it is to be measured by its content and context, not verse count numbers. So let's look at this one verse. Chapter 3, verse 7 of 1 Peter. In the NIV it says, Husbands in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. And then ESV says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. And lastly, KJV reads like this, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. And so Peter is saying to the husband, he's saying to us as men, first of all, to be considerate. He says in the same way, meaning as the wives in the same way or likewise were to be submissive, so the husbands are also to be considerate. And he says, in, 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 when you read in ESV, if we are to understand what to be considered, it means it is reading saying, live with an understanding way, live with them in an understanding way. And KJV says that, you know, he says in KJV, dwell with them according to knowledge. So to say that to be considered to the woman, to live with them in an understanding way is to have knowledge of who they are, to know the wife God has given you. For those who are in school or those who finish school, you know that if you wanted to understand the topic or subject deeply and very well, it called for hours of studying, hours of turning pages and researching for you to know something. So as well for the man to be able to know the wife God has given them, it calls for you to spend enough time with them, spend time with them to be able to know them. Not just only knowing their name, not, as, not just only knowing their relatives and where they come from. Peter is talking about an in-depth understanding, an in-depth knowledge of who they are, knowing how they feel, knowing what they love, knowing them when they are happy or sad, knowing how their day was. This is what Paul, Peter is just saying. Spend time with your wife. He also continues on and say, Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. He says, live with your wives. He's not saying live with your workmates at the workplace. He's not saying live with them in separate bedrooms. He's not saying live with them in separate beds. He's not saying live with them in separate cities or countries. But he's saying live with them. Because when you live with them, you are able to understand them easily. This is what scripture is saying. Husbands, live with your wives with an understanding. My prayer for us is that for those who are watching this and you're already a husband, I pray that you take this as a priority to understand your wife, spend time with them, not time with your friends at a bar, not time with your friends somewhere, not time with your friend 
in another place, but spend time with your wife. But also I'm praying for us, the young men who are watching this, that let it not stop at the time of dating. Because always when it is dating time, we spend time with the women God has brought to us, we take them out. But when you get married, you forget about this. I believe this is a lifetime call to spend time with the wife, to understand them and be considerate. Secondly, Peter says, after saying be considerate, he says, treat them with respect. It reads, treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Peter is saying to the husbands to respect their wives in a culture where men were held with high view compared to the women and children. In the same way he's speaking to, speaking to us in a culture where some, some, some families set a huge sum of dowry to their daughters. And so when some men are able to pay this, they treat their women, their wives, as property. We have a celebrity here in the city who even sang a song, My woman is my property. You can just imagine. But Peter is saying that we need to go against culture and respect the women that God has brought into our lives. And then he continues on to say, respect them as the weaker partner. I don't think he's saying they're weak intellectually because we have very intelligent women. I don't think he's saying they're weak in some other way because, I mean, you read about women like Heidi Lamal. They tell us that she invented a frequency hopping technology that became the groundwork for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We also read of another woman called Catherine Johnson, who was a phys phys physicist and, and a mathematician, and we are told that he contributed largely on the space technology. We have women in politics. We also have women in social works. We have women who are fighting for human rights. We have, I mean, women in all sectors of life. So when Peter is saying that they are the weaker partners, he's not saying that they are weak intellectually, he's not saying they're weak socially or politically, but he's just saying possibly because the way we are created, the, I mean physically, men tend to have muscle and strong compared to women. Even when we have some exceptionals of some women who are built up to be stronger than men somehow, but I believe generally men are physically stronger. And so he's saying that treat them with respect even when they are the weaker partner. He's saying there's a difference in the way God has made us. But the difference does not mean that they are inferior or that we are greater than them. We are all of value before him, before God. Because he adds and says that the women are heirs with us of the gracious gift of life. Because when Jesus gave his life, when God showed grace to us, he showed it to male and female. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world, meaning he loved the male and female, the children and the old, the black and the white. He also, you read Genesis and it says that he created male and female in his image. So to say that we are different, but we are of equal value before God. And then he concludes saying that, treat them with respect so that nothing will hinder your prayers. This is a principle that is repeated everywhere in scripture, that your relationship with man affects your relationship with God. You read Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15 and says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We read Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24 and says, So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. And then 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar for he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, he has not seen. I mean, this is repeated everywhere, that if you are not able to relate well with the people around you, then that will affect your relationship with God too. You can't say that you love God and you don't love your wife. You don't love the people God has put around you. You can't say that you're bringing a gift to God of appreciation. When you can't even give a gift to the people around you, your loved ones, your wife and friends. I mean, you can't say that you can come to God for forgiveness when you're not forgiving the people in your life. So this is very clear. Your relationship with God should also be seen with your relationship in your relationships with people around you. So as I finish this up, 
How I pray that God will teach the men watching this, that God will teach us as men to respect the women in our lives. How I pray that God will teach us to also, I mean, treat them with understanding. Because we see that if we don't, this is going to hinder our prayers. Respect and understanding the women or the wife is not going to start the day you walk down the aisle and say, I do to your wife. And then they put a ring on your finger. It should start today by respecting the women around you, your sisters in your family, your mother, and the women in the church and everywhere. We are called to respect them because they are also hairs with us of the gracious gift of God. Because they are also created in the image of God. Because we all are of value before God. I pray that God you will teach us to respect women in our lives. I pray that God you will teach us to live with them with understanding. Amen.